So one of the, um, the challenges I see companies struggle with is, is, as you said, the lack of clarity around what is this innovation stuff supposed to do for us in the beginning. But um, and, and this is something that uh, Bob Bergelman's written a lot about, which is this episodic ness of innovation. And I know in the book, you stress the importance of sustained resource commitments to innovation. But wh why do you think it is that it, in so many cases, it kind of comes and then it maybe enjoys its day in the sun and then a leader moves on? I mean, I'll give you an example. When I was doing um, a lot of work at IBM, this would have been back in the 90s, uh, and Lou Gerstner was the CEO at the time and built what I still consider to be you know, a textbook example of a terrific innovation program it was called the Emerging Business Opportunity Program. And, you know, it, it, it was almost as though they read your book, right? <laughs> For those of us just joining, uh, we're talking about the, book, the Innovation Leader uh, by Steve Wonker and colleagues. And Steve is with me here. Um, and then when Gerstner moved on, Palmasano came in and Palmasano was very much a you know, shareholder returns, market driven by the numbers kind of person. And the whole thing just really withered um, and, you know, had to be reinvented over and over again. So why do you think that happens? No innovation program is perfect, right? Even even at EBO, I remember they had, uh, they had one fatal flaw, which is that they got these super high flying execs to come in and do a quick rotation to lead an emerging business opportunity. Uh, but the problem with those high-flying execs is they knew that in 18 months, they'd be on to something else. Uh, and so it, things were built for a lot of flash and bang, but not necessarily for sustainable success. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, know, you, you learn these things, but people can lose patience. Or, I mean, I've seen very successful innovation programs happening, like in a consumer goods uh, company I worked with. And then there was a huge product recall. Uh, and uh, you know, wiped out a quarter of revenues in one year. Yeah. And so it was easy to cut something that was ultimately a discretionary expense. Mm -hmm. So people get frustrated and they guardrail, right? They, they over-resource and they do a lot of innovation theater and uh, things that feel good, but don't have the long-term vision to actually deliver the big returns. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they cut. But innovation is like a brand, right? You don't build a brand through very episodic. Now we're going to say a lot about this brand and then we'll go dark for five years and then we'll say a lot more about it. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, it has to be sustainably nurtured, which means just being realistic at the outset about what you can afford, having a portfolio plan of how much is going to be invested early on for quick wins, low risk, how much later, bigger returns, diversifying your risk types, all the sorts of things. But we talk about the book, and I know you talk about it as well, but are often steps that people skip just in a little bit of haste. It really has a big negative long-term impact. Mm -hmm.